Hey y'all, it is Coach Steph. Welcome to the live. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. I'm gonna be talking about uh, fast weight loss. I'm pulling up my notes. Y'all, it's Tuesday. Um, I am super excited. First of all, we've had a great 16 weeks. So we are in our 16th week of the Fit Figure Formula. Um, so this was the second cohort of the year. The ladies have done amazing, and I'm I'm very very proud of them. Um, so we're going to be winding up for this cohort um, next week. I'm going to be onboarding the new ladies who are coming into the group, and then we're getting started September 11th. So if you have not yet scheduled your uh, call, you will want to click the link in the comments that's pinned in the comments to apply um hey if you're watching y'all y'all popped on here pretty quickly i know i was a little bit late so hey say hi if you are watching i'm going to be talking about fast weight loss um and also just sharing with you some of my client wins right now um for ladies who are uh coming out of the second cohort hey tawana thanks for watching um so y'all we always want fast weight loss, right? Like everybody wants to just lose weight. We just want to lose weight. Take care. Um, but I'm gonna talk to you about like why that's not a great idea um, and what to do instead. And what I do with my clients typically is like, we don't start with like, hey, here's all the changes you need to make week one now, go do it. I don't start out like that. I had two clients uh, who signed up for the early bird. They had one-on-one -on -one calls with me uh, for the last couple of weeks and both of them messaged me at different times. They were like, you know what? I just really appreciate that like we're starting off slow and that like I feel like I can do this, right? Think about someone who's been struggling. It might be you who feels like, man, I, I have this goal, but I'm struggling to create what I want. I'm already nervous for investing into a program. You know, you may have tried other things in the past and you feel a little bit anxious and then you get in and you're like, oh, okay, I can do that, right? It just kind of like takes the pressure off, lets you know that you can do this and that it doesn't have to be all or nothing perfectionist, right? It doesn't have to be all or nothing. And so that is the beauty of uh, of not being in a rush, right? So I'm gonna get into this. Hey, Tina. Hello, hello, everyone. Joining. I'm surprised y'all are joining at 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. for me. Um. All right. So fast weight loss. So obviously, in societies, the society that we live in, we're always like, okay, let's hurry up and get this instant gratification, right? We want rapid results. We want to do something real quick to get the result and then live a lifestyle. And so we've talked a lot about the fact that you can't do something to get to a place and then do something completely different to keep that place. It doesn't work like that, right? So if we have ever seen on Instagram, on Facebook, on you know different people's websites, because um, my clients will also send me this like, look at this person, they uh, you know transformed and I'm like, you have no idea what they did to get there. You don't know what kind of shape they were in at the beginning because like I'm a former athlete. I've worked out, I'm sure thousands of times in my life at, at this point. If I got like really out of shape and then I try to get back in shape, it's probably gonna be a little bit easier for me, right? But if you've um, been heavier um, or you've never really been at the fitness level that you wanted to, um, it's, it might take you a little bit longer, right? So comparison always puts you in lack and scarcity, right? Even if you feel like you're doing better than the person that you're comparing, you're always in lack and scarcity when you are comparing. Because typically if we're comparing, we're comparing because we feel less than. And social media is a lie, y'all. I know coaches in real life, okay? And on the internet. And what you see is not always what you get. Right, people be using other people's photos, people do Photoshop, like real talk. Um, so don't compare yourself because you have no idea. You're probably comparing yourself to something that's not even real or something that is not 
as accurate as you might think, okay? So how do I know if I'm rushing? So I'm gonna go over some tips on how this can be a little bit sneaky because of course we're not saying like, I'm gonna hurry. I wanna hurry up and get this done, right? Typically we're not saying those things, but here are some things that you might be saying. Um, number one, you know that you're in a rush for fast weight loss if there's a timeline. And this could say, this could sound something like, I gotta lose 10 pounds for my birthday. I wanna lose 30 pounds for my birthday. I want to go on my cruise and be, you know, 150 or whatever. Like there's a timeline. If you have a timeline, chances are you're in a rush and you're looking for fast results, right? That may or may not be sustainable. So a lot of us, I've had clients before who were like, oh, I want to get under, you know, I want to get under 300. This client wanted to get under 300 before like a cruise or something she was going on in November. And she was like, uh, I want to get under this weight and it didn't happen, right? And so we set this arbitrary number, just out of the blue number, this out of the blue timeline and we expect our bodies to comply to this thing that we made up we make it up based off of no facts no data just this is just what i want and it doesn't it's not rooted in science and our body doesn't care what we think and what we want right like if you have a timeline on your weight loss it's going to make you feel like you're failing if you don't hit the goal so with this client um, she really wanted this goal by that time. It didn't happen. It happened a little bit later than she expected. And the surprising thing is, and here's the thing, she got under 300 and then it was no longer a big deal. <laughs> then it was just like, okay, yeah, like let's move on to the next goal. And I was like, wait a minute. So you have been talking to me about this and we're finally here and now you don't care about it. And I was always just so super puzzled. So. Whenever you have a timeline, I want you to evaluate where did you get the timeline, <clears throat> why that amount of pounds, right? And can you actually control this? So what the frustrating thing about that is you cannot control how much weight your body releases. Like that's that part's out of your control. But what you can control is how much food am I putting in my mouth? Am I planning my food? Am I getting in my walks? Am I doing my workouts? Am I drinking my water? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I managing my stress? Am I setting boundaries? Am I talking to myself in a positive way, right? Those are the things that I can control. So having more of a uh, process goal is going to be more beneficial than this outcome that you actually cannot produce. You can't produce that, right? I know the internet says lose one to two pounds a week. Again, that does not mean that you're gonna lose one to two pounds every single week. It is an average. And it just means I'm gonna take the weight that I lost over the amount of time that I tried and divide that. And yes, people say one to two pounds a week, but even 0.5, like half a pound a week, average, right? It's still really good. Um, and so a lot of times my clients, because our weights are gonna go up and down, if you haven't, Checked out my stories. I want to check out my stories today before they, um, you know, disappear um, from lots of client screenshots from our app that will show that like your weight's going to go up and down. But as long as that top number and the last number are going in a, in a descend, you're good. You're making progress. Okay. So timelines means you're in a rush. Right? If you're working out seven, six or seven times a week, or even like I've had clients who came in, they're like doing two a days, working out uh, like cardio in the morning with lifting weights at night, unless you're like a competitor, you, you're in a sport or something, like you really don't need to work out two times a day. Unless you're getting on the stage and you're like gonna be a fitness competitor or something like that, you really don't need to work out six or seven times a week. Now I know clients who are like, well, I like working out that much because it helps my mental health. And that I understand because I'm the same way. But I will say that there's more ways that you can take care of your mental health. Um, and it doesn't always have to be a hardcore 10 out of 10 workout, right? It doesn't have to be 
a 10 out of 10 workout. You can go and you can stretch and you can do yoga. You can, you know, take a walk outside. You can play a game with your kids outside. Like it doesn't have to be a super duper hard workout. So if you feel frantic, like, okay, I got to get these workouts in. And another way that you can kind of tell too, so this is like the one, two, the third way is like, if you're thinking about your workouts as solely a way to burn calories, right? Your workouts are like, oh, I got to burn calories. And you're constantly looking at your watch like, okay, how many calories am I burning? That's another telltale sign like you might be in a rush, right? I like to tell my clients who do come to me like that, like number one, can we focus on getting stronger, right? Focus on getting stronger, not necessarily getting skinny. Um, focus on um, your endurance and your stamina, meaning like how you feel during your workout and like after your workout and your recovery time and things like that. Um, and then focus on enjoyable ways to move your body. I have a client right now who's about to offboard and my recommendation for her is like, you know, she doesn't like going to the gym as much. She's been doing my workouts, but that's not her jam. So I'm like, well, find something that you love. If it's doing the classes at a gym, if it's going hiking, biking, swimming, what is sustainable is going to be what is enjoyable to you. And if you can find a way to move your body that you're like, yes, I'm excited to do this, like I like it, then that's gonna be something that's more sustainable than trying to do two a days at the gym and you don't really enjoy that, right? So if you're working out seven days a week, six, seven days a week, if you're doing two a days, if you have a timeline on your weight loss that you can't control anyway, you might be in a rush, okay? If you're constantly thinking about how many calories you're burning during the workout, uh, you might be in a rush. I saw a meme earlier that said, um, get fit in the gym, lose weight in the kitchen, okay? So many times people are so focused on weight loss and then they start telling me all the all the exercises they're doing. And I'm like, well, that's great, but what are you eating? How are you tracking your calories? You know how many calories you're eating because that's gonna be the biggest determinator, determining factor. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, if you're constantly weighing and adjusting how much you eat or work out based on what you see on the scale, okay? If that's you, you're probably rushing or just have like a high expectation um, and that causes a lot of issues. I have plenty of clients who have a poor relationship with the scale. They get on the scale, and they see a pound more, they think they failed, they did something wrong, they made a mistake, they beat themselves up, they decide, well, shoot, I shouldn't eat dinner tonight or I should over exercise the next day. That is not what we want, guys. That is not the kind of relationship with food, with yourself and with the scale that you want this like tit for tat, I eat a salad so I lose a pound, but I ate, uh, you know, Cheetos one day and now I gained weight and now that's, that's what, that is anxiety. That is stressful. Who wants to live like that? Right? I know you guys want to like live a lifestyle. You want to just have healthy habits and just be mindful and be able to live, you know, in the body that you want and that feels good and stop dieting. So if we want to stop dieting and doing that, we've got to stop thinking like a dieter. That's what a dieter does. That's what a dieter thinks. That is diet culture, not a fit culture, okay? So if you have a timeline, if you are working out seven days a week, if you are uh, solely thinking of your workouts as ways to burn calories, um, if you are adjusting what you're doing based on what the scale is saying, you might be in a hurry. You might be in a rush. And then if there is a start, if there's like, okay, I'm Monday, I am starting this, right? You might be in a rush because everything is changing on one day or one week, everything changes. And that just means like, I'm in a hurry to clean this up. Like I've been doing something wrong. Let me hurry up and just uh, change my entire diet. I haven't been working out, but I'm gonna start working out six days a week, 
right? If there's like a drastic change in what you're doing, now I know sometimes when we get like a health scare, maybe your diet, your doctor might say, um, you know, you have prediabetes or whatever, and you feel like I need to finish this immediately. Even then, honestly, it's still best to go in a slow manner because it's gonna be more sustainable. If you change everything all at one time, that feels really overwhelming after a while. You might get through two or three weeks, but that fourth week, you're gonna be like, okay, I need a break from this, okay? And then six, it damages your your um, self-esteem, right? We start thinking that something is wrong with me. Something is wrong with me that I can't stay consistent. Something is wrong with me that I'm not disciplined. Something is wrong with me that my body just doesn't work. My metabolism is shot. I can't, I can't seem to lose the weight. And we start to think that like internally, uh, there is something wrong, but there is nothing wrong with you, right? It is more so like there might be an education piece that's missing. Um, there might be, you might have some health issues, right? And that doesn't mean anything is wrong with you. It's just like, how can I gain my skills to be able to manage that better, but not looking at me as something that's wrong and that needs to be fixed. Hope this is making sense, y'all. All right. So, why rushing does not serve you, okay? Number one is unsustainable. If you are doing something and you're in a rush, are you going to live your life like this? If you create it in a rush, if you are uh, cutting out meals, skipping your carbs, working out twice a, a day, if you're doing that to get there, that's the only way you're gonna keep it is by continuing to do that. If you're doing keto, to get to the weight loss goal, you're gonna have no idea what to do when you gain, when you start eating carbs again, right? Number two is unsustainable. These are the reasons why being in a rush does not serve you. It is not enjoyable. Who wants to cut out carbs? Who wants to not eat um, and feel like deprived and like I'm doing something wrong if I have a carb, right? That's not enjoyable or sustainable. Okay. It creates frustration, body resentment, and increased stress. So this is a really big one. So this kind of goes back to like the timeline. If you have a timeline right on your weight loss and you're like, I didn't hit the goal. Number one, you're thinking I did something wrong. You feel frustrated and you start to resent your very body that you get to live in. I get to live in this body, right? And because I set this unrealistic expectation that was not rooted in science, not rooted in anything but just a, a desire that may have been just misguided, now I'm resenting my body because I'm like, dang it, why can't I just lose this weight? That increases your stress, right? You're already under stress because you're overworking out and you're trying to eat too little. And now you have mental and psychological stress because you're like, frustrated because your body won't comply with a decision that you made, right? Number four, muscle and, well, muscle loss that decreases your metabolism. I feel really bad for ladies who, um, you know, either go on a, like a really, uh, like a fad diet or take certain medications now that are super prevalent even in my family, and I'm just like, I don't love it. I don't love the option. I know some people um, need it for different reasons, but I'm not a big fan because um, it decreases your metabolism. If you're losing weight really, really fast, your body is also eating away at your muscle. And if you don't wanna be on that medication for your life, because that's my understanding, um, from clients that I've had who have been on medication and then just if you look on their website it says uh, obesity is a chronic condition which is just code for like yeah you got to stay on this again anything that you do temporarily you're gonna get temporary results you can't expect to take a pill or a shot to help you lose weight and then get off the shot and then it not have any effect it's gonna have an effect right so when we lose weight really quickly, we're losing metabolism, or we're decreasing our metabolism because muscle is active tissue, and 
we don't realize it, but actually your calorie threshold is now lower. Now you have to eat even less. And that is why there's always like this race to the bottom. Think about it. If you have, if you're 150 pounds and you weigh and you have a certain amount of muscle mass, then you decrease that muscle mass. Your, the amount of calories that your body burns at rest lowers. That means that the same amount of calories that you were eating before is not gonna be at a maintenance level. Now it's like more calories than you actually need because you have less muscle. Okay, so we really wanna make sure if you're in a calorie deficit phase, you wanna make sure to keep your protein. Your protein really doesn't change. Maybe unless you're in a bulking phase or something like that, but your protein level does not change. And usually for my clients, it's about like, if you're tracking in my fitness pal, like 30%. Um, if they can, sometimes I start out a little bit less than that if they have trouble. But um, so your mind matters. So quick fixes mess with, messes with your mind, your mindset, your relationship with food. It can trigger unhealthy cycles of restriction and binge eating, right? Because I can't have all of these things. And my energy is focused on I can't have all of these things because I'm in a diet because I'm in a rush. And then we're human. We get into a situation where we're like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. And we're like eating everything, right? So it can create this binge cycle. You think you're in a calorie deficit and you're like restricting and dieting, but you binge two to three times a week and now you ate back all of those calories, right? So you have to really break that cycle to know that like I can eat something that I really, really enjoy every single day so it doesn't become this big thing. Ice cream is not a big thing. Cookies are not a big thing because I, I treat myself in moderation and I don't feel restricted. Okay, number six, nutritional deficiencies, electrolyte imbalances, and even heart problems. When you are cutting out whole food groups, you're also cutting out all of the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals that those um, foods have in them, right? So you want to think about, of course, your macros, your protein, your carbs, and your fat. But there's iron, uh, manganese, uh, magnesium, um, vitamin C, vitamin B, vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin D, vitamin E. Like there are so many vitamins and minerals that we need for optimal health. Like not just like losing weight, but like optimal health and cancer prevention, right? Like let's not forget that like few, food is fuel and can be medicine for our body if we're picking the right choices, right? So you wanna make sure that you're not cutting out whole food groups. Now, if you have an allergy, that's something different, um, but you do wanna make sure that like, I'm getting my levels checked. If I need to supplement, I can supplement if I have a, an allergy or something like that. Um, but we need healthy fat, putting in healthy fat on purpose. So the, the template that I give my clients has healthy fat at every single meal and snack, depending on uh, what they choose. Um, healthy fat, very important. Having fiber-filled carbs, very important. Um, having a lean protein, very important. Um, what else? Fiber-filled carbs uh, and having lots of veggies which is a viral field card, honestly. Um, and then number seven, it can put a strain on your immune system and hormone balance. So for ladies who aren't maybe adding in the healthy fat, we actually need fat for uh, vitamins. So our vitamin, our fat soluble vitamins, vitamin D, A, E, K, we need fat to help increase those, uh, the absorption of those vitamins. Uh, we also need fat for our hormones, right? For a good hormone balance. We need healthy fat, omega-3s, omega-6. Um, you know, if you're not taking, if you're not eating fish twice a week, which is the recommendation, like having some sort of fatty fish twice a week. Um, if you're maybe not a meat eater, if substituting that out with, um, you know, some nuts and seeds and, um, algae or whatever um, supplements, um, you wanna make sure that you're getting in healthy fat for hormonal balance. And if you're cutting out food 
just to lose weight. You might be getting sick, right? You might be getting sick. You might be changing the gut bacteria, which our immune system is highly correlated with the health of our gut. And that is going to impact your health, your weight, um, again, your relationship with food, all the things. So we wanna make sure that we have a balanced plate that we enjoy what we're doing so that we can keep doing it so it's sustainable and holistic, okay? Um, and the last thing I'll say is this, rushing might, um, it also doesn't serve you in the way that like doing super intense workout, like every, sing every single time you go to do a workout, it doesn't have to be super duper intense. Like it's fine to get a sweat, it's fine to work out hard, but you need breaks in between there. Like you need rest days for one, but then you also need a week where it's like, okay, this is a restorative week. I'm just going in and I'm just gonna do a little something and I'm gonna leave. It didn't have to be um, super duper intense because you know you get injuries, you're already not feeding your body like properly. Then you're overworking out and not being able to recuperate because how do we recuperate by sleep and the food that we put in our body? And adding intense workouts can just damage that even more and make you more prone for injuries, okay? So we wanna make sure that we understand um, more about why, what the goal that you set, why did I set that goal? Sometimes I ask my clients like, why that weight? Why 150 or why 180, why 200? Why that, why that number, right? I had a client um, tell me the other day, which blew my mind because she was very, very attached to the scale. And she was just like, you know what? It's more important to me, like how I feel in my body and how I look and how I fit in my clothes. And I was blown away because I was like, what? I can't believe that she thought that like, if you work on your mindset, that shift can happen and then it just makes it it makes working out look like i'm just taking care of myself this is just how i take care of myself right we we wash our hair we get our hair done we might put on makeup we might have a facial routine we, we brush our teeth right this is just how i take care of myself that's how i want to feel i don't want to diet i don't want to feel like can't have this can't have that can't have this just to lose weight like i want to be able to like i eat well because i take care of myself i love myself i got to take care of this body i want to look good i want to feel good right so what if you change your perspective and change your mindset change your goal to checking in with yourself how do i feel today in my body i actually have um, one of my clients who did on board um with the early bird and she said um i have her doing an activity that says basically like how do you feel today because she was having a little bit of trouble articulating that because sometimes when i ask people like how they feel people don't check in with themselves enough and they start talking to me from their brain versus silence how do i feel right and creating some silence for that and so every day so far we've been just a form inside of the coaching app that I can see when she uh, puts in the information is like, how do I feel today? So there's just like a reminder, check in with you, check in with yourself and how do you feel? That's actually more important than the number on the scale. Now, I say that, I don't want people to think that I don't want you to have scale wins. I do, I do want you to have scale wins. Again, if you have not checked out my um, stories, make sure you go check out the stories and you can see um, some of the screenshots. If you miss it, because it might uh, disappear soon, there's some on my uh, profile page. Just scroll the page and you can see uh, a lot of them are there on there too. But it's not that I don't want you to have scale wins. My clients have scale wins. They're losing inches. They're eating more. Um, they're having mindset shifts. But it can't be the sole focus because, again, it messes with your relationship with food your relationship with yourself, your relationship with the scale. Um, let me check the chat. Um, is it okay to have a timeline if it's realistic? If you're not putting pressure on yourself, Kiera, like some people are like, oh, I gotta, um, I'm gonna, I need to lose weight next month and I gotta lose 30 pounds. And I'm like, huh? 
right? So here's what's realistic. This is what's um, 10 percent of your body weight in six months. So I'm gonna do the math. Let's say I weigh 225 and times point one, that's 22 pounds in uh, six months. So I'm gonna do 22 pounds divided by six. That's three pounds a month. That is what is quote unquote realistic. So even sometimes our realistic like number, we would say like, that's not enough. Like it needs to go faster, <laughs> right? So as much as you think you're being patient and this is not just for care, it's for everybody. It's like the, as much as you think you're being patient, like even more patient, right? Because that's actually healthy, 10% in six months. So again, if you weigh 225, 10%, is 22.5, I guess. And uh, if I divide that over six months, it's 3.6 pounds. So if you were on, if you were quote unquote only losing 3.6 pounds, you'd probably be like, oh my God, this isn't working. Something's not right, my body's broken. Like, no, like that's actually what it's supposed to be. Like it's, it's, um, it's not slow, it is, what I don't want to say industry standard, but clinically, right? That is the goal. Because what happens is, like in that six months, like maybe you lose weight really fast the first three months, and then it kind of trails off the next six months. But then, if, if you average it out, then that might be what it be what what it is. Um, so let me know if that makes sense here. Um. So if you know that your biggest issue is mindset, consistency, identity, being in a rush and it ain't working and you're frustrated. <laughs> you need to be inside the formula. Uh, again, make sure you go check out my the, the screenshots of the ladies on my profile page. But I literally had a call yesterday with a client um, who I've been coaching one-on-one -on -one for a while and she's just like, how, how much do you want me to eat? And in her brain, it's still not even clicking because I'm like, you're eating more. You're eating more food. I showed her her diagram. I showed her photos and clearly her waist is cinching in. I'm just like, you're eating more and it's working. But for some reason in her brain, it's like, I'm scared to eat more, I'm scared to eat more. But I'm like, but you've been eating more and the scale has been going down. So why not use that as evidence that this is working, girl, it's working. You do not have to skip meals. You do not have to be in a rush. Um, she told me that she went into the gym and she went in there with confidence. It's like a, it was like a new energy for herself because she went in typically and she's kind of like hiding from people. She doesn't want to see people that she knows. But for whatever reason, that day she went in and she had a lot more confidence in herself because we've been working on her mindset. And if you get that mindset shift, you will feel better automatically, even if you haven't gone all the way to your goals. Like she's been seeing progress, but she's not all the way to her goal yet but she still feels good. Don't you wanna feel great on your way to your goal? Do, or do you wanna stress out and put pressure and, and think something's wrong with yourself? That's never going to help you actually reach your goal, right? So, um, I'm gonna hop off of here and I'll be waiting for you to apply, okay? Uh, click the link in the profile if you have questions and you're like, hey, I'm not sure. Let me ask you a question. Come into my DMs. You can ask me whatever you want. Um, but the best way really is just to hop on a call. If you've ever been on a call with me, I use, I hate getting on a call with like, you know, companies or whatever. And they're like, they pressure you at the end. I'm just not like that. Like I want to coach women who want help. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to have some hesitation. I can kind of help you through that but there's no pressure. I'm going to listen to you talk. Um, I will let you know what it's like inside of the Fit Figure Formula. I have like a little, um, in the confirmation email, I think I put in the confirmation email, you get like a sneak peek uh, from, with an eight minute video to kind of see like what it entails. And then we meet, we talk, I get to know you better. Uh, we decide together if it's a good fit. And if it's not, that's okay, right? It doesn't have to be this big scary thing because I think, <gasps> Um, I had one of the clients that signed up 
a couple of weeks ago was like, I, I was so scared to do this. And I was like, yeah, the fear is always worse than the actual thing. So if you have questions, let me know. All right, y'all. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.